Mobile app testing, it sounds really important, but as an entrepreneur with an app idea, what do you really need to know about it? What questions do you need to ask a developer that you're gonna work with to build your app to ensure it's being tested thoroughly, especially if you don't have a software development background? I'm Carol Versalino, the co-founder of Oxy Labs, and this is my co-founder, Jay Lyerly, who also serves as our chief technology officer here at Oak City, and he's gonna join us to share his knowledge of testing. All right, Jay, so let's start with the basics. Why is it even important to test your app or your mobile app? Uh, so the important thing for testing, well, testing is really all about like risk management and how you can manage um, any changes to your application. So as you, <clears throat> as your app grows and develops, it becomes more and more complicated. And it's, a, it's always, as it becomes more complicated, it's easier to introduce problems when you make changes. So um, a good solid testing foundation sort of minimizes um, those kind of issues. So risk management, does it also help with expense later on down the road? Does it make it cheaper later at all? Uh, yeah, because um, since you're you're doing that risk management, you can you can feel safer in making changes later. And those later changes are less likely to, you know, sort of cause some catastrophic failure <laughs> that's snuck up on you. You wouldn't know anything about that. No, um, no, no. <laughs> So if you were an entrepreneur and you were going to hire an app developer, what advice or what things would you ask a developer about testing? Uh, so the first thing I would ask is just a really general, you know, what kind of testing do you do? Um, hopefully they don't say no, none. <laughs> uh, so uh, what you're looking for after that is, you know, what kind of automated testing they do. If it's, if so some developers will just do it all by hand. Go, okay, well, well, we do it all. And then at the end, we, we go through. And that's an important step, that manual testing. Uh, but you also want to have like some automated tests to go with it. Uh, we talk about test coverage. Um, and that's sort of how much of your application gets tested in an automated way. Uh, it's, it's really hard for like an in-user application, like a mobile app to have 100% test coverage, just because there are a lot of weird corner cases that aren't worth testing. Um, but, you know, you probably want to, you know, at least half, 50%, you know, maybe up to 70 or 80%, something like that would be a, a great number to hear. Okay. So if a developer says, yes, I do automated testing and I've got over 50% coverage, or they say 100% coverage, like, are there any red flags somebody should look for, especially if they really don't know what automated testing is or what test coverage even really means? Uh, well, the 100% the test coverage is a little bit scary because there are always some bizarre corner cases that it's really difficult to reach. And that's not really a, an efficient use of a developer's time because you know this like never happens. Um, as far as other red flags, um, you know, you might ask about like how how those tests get run. You know, is that is a, a, all part of a, an automatic continuous integration kind of thing where they have a a system that reproducibly tests and builds the product for them, or if it's like by hand, if they just do it, you know, sort of on the fly from their laptop, you know, and that kind of thing. Okay. Or you can do what I do and just ask them what tools they use and write down the list and madly Google them afterwards to see if they're actually legit. Oh, that's also a good idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, before we close, uh, just one question, just have to ask, can you share like a nightmare, a war story basically from where you should have had tests, maybe you didn't have tests and, and things didn't go so well. So one, one of the hard things is like, how much do you test? So we had an app we built one time where people made lists of stuff and they shared those with their friends and their friends could like, like pin those lists so they could come back to them later. And uh, we had an issue where uh, like if, if a user pinned somebody's list and they came back and like unpinned it later and like deleted that pin, uh, it would actually, it, it, there was a database mistake and it would cascade that deletion and actually delete the other person's list which was obviously like super bad. <laughs> yes. And we had tests for it. You know, we tested if I make a list and I delete it, does it go away? Do, do I, if I pin something and delete the pin, does it go away as expected? But we didn't, we in that case weren't checking for sort of those um, secondary effects. Uh, so that was a surprise and, and not good. But, you know, we, first thing we did was we went back and added a test for it. <laughs> 
And so that's right. that's that's an interesting way you can use testing to do bug fixes. If you get a if you get a bug, you can um, write a test that illustrates that bug, and then you go fix the bug, and that test turns green. It passes now, and that's a, that's a safety check in the future. So when you make more changes down the line, you don't reintroduce that bug by accident. Ooh, that, and that also could be like a good interview question for an entrepreneur who's hiring a developer to ask them, well, if you get bugs, what do you do? And ask about their process with bugs. And maybe a key thing to look for is, are you writing tests? Yep, So absolutely. Awesome. Jay, thank you so much for your wisdom on testing. And I know you you help us a lot at Oak City Labs with that. So we're very thankful for that. So if anyone has any questions or would like to hear more about testing or any other topics, just feel free to leave a comment, like this video, follow us on social media, or go to our website. That is www.oakcity.io. Thank you.